Um, so this is Abigail Carl Claussen, and um, I'm here today with uh, Dr. Dennis Bixlan Marquez um, with the Rebels, Exiles, and Bridge Builders uh, Cross Cultural Encounters in the Campos Menonitas of Chihuahua Oral History Project. Um, it's Friday, January 12th, uh, 2018, and uh, we're going to have a little conversation about uh, Dr. Marquez's uh, uh, research down in the Campos Menonitas. Uh, so welcome. Thank you so much for participating in this project. You're welcome. Um, so can you briefly um, introduce yourself to us? Well, yes, um, originally uh, from Mexico City. I lived most of my life here in the U.S.-Mexico border. I'm a professor of education and Chicano studies, and my link to this particular theme is that as a social linguist, I've been mapping out the northern Mexico area, developing social linguistic profiles, especially to measure, designed to measure bilingualism in uh, minority language communities, okay. in, in primarily in the northern state of Chihuahua, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you're doing this sociolinguistic mapping. Um, how specifically was uh, the, the Campos Manonitas connected to um, some of your other research areas? Well, since I used a very comparable instrumentation to measure not only their language use preference, the language use as well as preferences, mm -hmm. then that enables me to make comparisons, let's say, between the Mormons and the Mennonites. Mm -hmm. Not so much mm -hmm. with the Taramaras, because I was looking at a very specific case study of a radio mm -hmm. station oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. that broadcast in various indigenous languages. So mm -hmm. that was totally a, a different type of situation. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that was the same type of instruments that I had used measuring bilingualism on the American side of the border, let's mm -hmm. say, with the uh, uh, groups in, in southern Colorado. Mm -hmm. So. My, mm -hmm. the intent is usually to determine the state of bilingualism, the mm -hmm. direction in which it's going. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, uh, because of my background in education, is what mm -hmm. role does the educational system play mm -hmm. in either maintaining or changing the status? Mm -hmm. And certainly in the United States, but even in Mexico, that research is, uh, can be used to make decisions about the type of language programs you would have, mm -hmm. the programs that a government may want to fund or oppose, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so what were um, kind of your longer term goals um, for conducting research in the Campos Menonitas? You know, you mentioned a little bit about um, policy um, and systemic uh, um, uh, implementation mm -hmm. of these. Programs. Well, certainly, as, as I got into mm -hmm. the research, I thought it was uh, interesting to see the other ramifications. It was hard just to isolate yourself in the, in the language area, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what I published in. But there were many other dimensions of interaction in terms of mm -hmm. how a group maintains its identity, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the Mennonites uh, would be a you know, a, a case study that would allow me to look at other factors, even if I can incorporate them into, a, let's say, an academic article in language. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I had to do with the Mennonite research was to hit the brakes and go mm -hmm. back and do an article just on uh, immigration patterns mm, mm -hmm. because otherwise I couldn't understand what some of the changes and mm -hmm. where, why people were wanting to go one, one way or another. Mm -hmm. So once I understood migration as it mm -hmm. applies to these groups, mm -hmm. then it was easier to understand uh, why the communities that I was uh, uh, studying behaved mm -hmm. the way they did. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, since certainly one of them was totally in its way out of out of the country to Argentina, mm -hmm. absolutely. It, while the other one mm -hmm. in the south was being reconstituted mm -hmm. on the basis of new, newly formed uh, mm -hmm. or, or newly acquired affiliation with mm -hmm. a, 
with mm -hmm. a Protestant uh, mm -hmm. religion. Mm -hmm. And yet there was uh, another pattern of what we call internal migration from uh, between the colonies, mm -hmm. among the colonies, especially from north to south. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 I would, let's say, give someone a ride on the car and ask them about a lot of questions about what, you know, where, where do you live and why are you, have you moved? And it's mm -hmm. interesting. Some of them were telling me, well, we're going to move out of the southern area into the northern area mm -hmm. because over mm -hmm. here we're being Mexicanized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and talk a little bit about the that comparison and contrast between um, the the colonies in the north and the south, sort of um, culturally, linguistically, and the experiences that you had in in those different colonies. Because um, uh, from what I was looking at um, in the research there. Um, there's very different, um, particularly during that period of time uh, you were doing the research. Well, it, indeed, many of the inhabitants from the north uh, came from the southern part, but had mm -hmm. acquired some additional inhabitants uh, from Canada. Mm -hmm. But you also have, at the same time that all this is going on, you have uh, Mennonites who've gone down to other parts of Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, Belize at that time, mm -hmm. uh, British Honduras, yeah. and and I began to look at the ads, for example, in newspapers, uh, Mennonite newspaper uh, from Lloyd Boliviano, people flying to South America back and mm -hmm. forth. And that. Mm -hmm. So within the colonies, you would find that the, there is there were mechanisms for new additions. Of, uh, uh, typically as a result of marriage. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. as, and that also, of course, splits families. Yeah. So they, they were definitely part of the reason when I said, well, why are people moving? Mm -hmm. Most of the movement seems to be uh, economically determined by it's simply greener on the other side. Yeah. But also a rather quick, uh, a tremendous willingness just to pack up and go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which other groups don't, you know, would really think about, you know, other groups, when you talk about attraction or impelled migration, mm -hmm. and they would tell me that, well, we think that the government or someone's encroaching on our prerogatives, mm -hmm. the privilegium has not being respected, mm -hmm. but we find also that uh, economically they could not grow because their success had driven the price of the land around them mm -hmm. higher. Yeah. So now you find another place. And, and, and doing that means that some families have to make a decision yeah. about which way, whether they stay or go. Yeah. And inevitably, they may indeed uh, migrate and then come back and, mm -hmm. and so on. So it's, uh, there's a lot of fluidity mm -hmm. in the presence, which makes it hard if, if you're researching language because you mm -hmm. don't have that stability. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that that you can say, well, this is happening because these people who've been here so long now are influenced by mm -hmm. media or something else. Well, no, they're, they're moving around and that makes mm -hmm. makes a difference. But uh, the, the search still continues at, at the present time when you have mm -hmm. expansions in northern Mexico to the very... Um, northwest portions of the state. Mm -hmm. yeah, unfortunately, that has placed the, them smack in the land of the corridors for drug trafficking. Yeah, absolutely. Which is yeah. very, very dangerous because it's a fairly isolated area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all there is. It's a fairly isolated area, and uh, you're going to someone will try to acquire land from mm -hmm. you forcibly. Yeah, there, there's all kinds of uh, negative uh, possibilities. Mm -hmm. But that, that, was, I, I, that was the primary distinction was people coming up uh, from the south, mm -hmm. basically in, in, in search of more land and opportunities. Mm -hmm. But also they felt they did not care for the proximity, for example, to Bautemoc. Mm -hmm. Where they felt that modernity was a constant challenge. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which is documented absolutely. in a variety of uh, of ways. Yeah. So absolutely. Being able to maintain a degree of uh, of, of isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It was very very important. 
and, and it's a kind of you got to have context with the outside world and so on mm -hmm. but at the same time you want to be able to keep that outside world mm -hmm. at bay yeah absolutely mm. and how um, the different communities relationships with technology then impacts uh, you know the development of language over time and how they're uh, interacting linguistically or not you know mm -hmm. with surrounding communities yeah. Well, and it's like the Southern uh, Bilingual Education Program I was looking there at the one in Colonia Manitoba. Mm -hmm. They had made a decision that their children would need to be sufficiently conversant in Spanish to mm -hmm. effectively interface with the outside mm -hmm. world in, on a commercial basis. Yeah, absolutely. That's not the case in Capulín. Absolutely. Where none of that would ever be allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so what was the, the, the time frame that you were conducting this research and what did daily life look like um, in the in the campos back then? Well, in the it was I did most of the research in the 80s. Uh, just about, yeah, it was in 19, 1980s. And mm -hmm. uh, certainly in Capulín, the the Newfield brothers own a store, which is a focal point of the community mm -hmm. for people coming from the outside to buy Mennonite products mm -hmm. or even to, for someone to catch a ride to go outside because mm -hmm. they're, the, the, the colony is still about, I want to say about 20 minutes, half, half hour from the main highway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so if you since if you do not own transportation, then that mm -hmm. becomes a, right exactly a, a problem. Yeah, and it's also where during certain times of the year where Mexican national labor is required for sure. Mm -hmm. Then will show up to to be hired. Yeah, but one of the things I was uh, well in the very first time I went to do researching in Capulín because I actually started. Uh, Nord rather than the other way around mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> was because uh, I didn't have any contacts, so I didn't know exactly how to. With the Mormon colonies, I had contacts. Yeah, That's not the yeah. case here. Uh, and I met uh, Jacobo Levin, who mm -hmm. was one of the two leaders, and so he explained mm -hmm. to me a great deal about mm -hmm. the, the structure of the camps and how they yeah. they were governed and so on, yeah. and. He, you could uh, see that they were, all, of course, they were already, already made the decision to leave and so on, which probably made it mm -hmm. easier to speak to someone from the outside. Right, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was able to tour the community, uh, look at the architecture. Yeah. Uh, and that focal point of the community, the store, probably the, the brothers there, that family, were the most bilingual person. I guess you could not mm -hmm. distinguish their Spanish from any other northern Mexican national. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You could. But I found it interesting that one of them was a dentist and the other one was the doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and one of my own students in my class was telling me how he had met one of the sons mm -hmm. who apparently recited in El Paso because I guess he used to come with the dad to mm -hmm. the mall or to buy all these products that you're going to sell there to everybody right, exactly. else. Right, mm exactly. -hmm. And eventually the the allure, if you please, of the mm -hmm. city <laughs> had won him over. And that's always the, I guess, the fear, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And yet there's a dependency on these individuals to do, I'm sure, all kinds of things mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. and the outside world, including... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, well, many of the Mennonites will get medical services in, in the in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned to you, one uh, Dr. Hatch mm -hmm. from the Mormon community mm -hmm. used to mm -hmm. provide medical services to them. Yeah. But they're also able to go either to Chihuahua City, if that's what they need, or Juarez. And mm -hmm. many of them do come and get medical services here in, in El Paso. Yeah. And will and then the think they need to go to the Mayo Clinic or Houston or whatever, and those who are able to afford it mm -hmm. do so. Yeah. It's an expensive proposition, but nonetheless. And I was yeah. doing that in the middle of the peso devaluations, you mm -hmm. see, which mm -hmm. made a huge impact on 
what you could do earning earning pesos mm -hmm. that were losing value yeah, absolutely. in terms of your purchasing power on this side goes way down down yeah yeah very yeah. they, they, they you know they, nobody has escaped that but mm -hmm. everyone I never knew for example uh, how many of them had for example let's say uh, bank accounts on this side right mm -hmm. because one of the one well, the colony, uh, half of it was over in Santa Rosa in Argentina. Uh, the people were sending money from the U.S. And mm -hmm. one time the community leader calls me and says mm -hmm. that, you know, he had been detained by uh, American customs. Mm -hmm. And it just behind, you know, but as he's pulling out his passport and everything, then, then the guy can see that he has all those wads of money. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. You, know, you have to declare over. Absolutely. 10,000 uh -huh. and so on. And, mm -hmm. and he was telling me, no, no, t tell, uh, tell him there's nothing wrong. I do yeah. this all the time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, up. no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but again, the, the, that uh -huh. model minority, they were able to check mm -hmm. with the bank that he was bringing that money, mm -hmm. which could, which you would have very, uh, it would have been impossible for him to get, to, to bring that money out of Mexico mm -hmm. through the banking system oh, okay. because Mexico was trying to prevent the froze dollar accounts, turn mm -hmm. them into pesos mm -hmm. and to kind of stabilize. And if you have dollars, you would, and you want to send them to the U.S., we're going to change mm -hmm. them into pesos. And by that, by the time you get to the U.S., you may have a lot less than you started. Right. Absolutely. So he was coming to make deposits at the bank mm -hmm. who was able to verify that he was just transferring the funds over to Argentina mm -hmm. and so that they were legitimate transactions, mm -hmm. but he was still in violation of a uh, currency mm -hmm. transaction or currency laws in terms of how much you have to report yeah. and so on. Absolutely. To them, this was just a transit point for their money. Mm -hmm. So they I was able to see the the economic uh, the, the 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 deteriorating Mexican economy and how it was affecting them, mm -hmm. because also as things started to go up in price and what have you, well now all of a sudden, not having, for example, uh, pumping of water. Mm -hmm. With elect uh, electricity and so on, yeah. ma makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Even though in Mexico, electricity for uh, agricultural use is subsidized mm -hmm. by the federal government to, to help the, the farmers, but this one would not be acceptable because of their lifetime. Yeah. And so um, there seem to be kind of a lot of variants. Um, in like the types of interactions that Mennonites would have um, with Mexicans um, and depending on the colony and depending on uh, their position in the colony. Um, but what were um, some typical uh, relationships between Mexican and Mennonites at that time? And then what were considered atypical relationships and interactions? Mm -hmm. Well, the more typical had to be commercial. Mm -hmm. Linguistically, you can see how males tended to be more bilingual, that is to know more Spanish than mm -hmm. females, which was not unexpected, but nonetheless, that was really uh, pervasive. So mm -hmm. contacts having to do when they go shopping and so on, interaction mm -hmm. would be primarily done by the males. Mm -hmm. Especially because that's it was it had to be in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So that that was very common. So the other, like I, in that in the northern colony, was very much uh, having to do with the purchase of the dairy products mm -hmm. or selling of goods. Mm -hmm. uh, what was atypical uh, was the the concept of a um, el paseo. The, after the religious services on Sunday, then teenagers were able to mm -hmm. mingle among themselves and so on. So, unscru unscrupulous Mexican vendors would show up in cars with loud music to attract 
oh, people okay, yeah. uh-huh. uh, and also then take advantage to sell cigarette and liquors and, and mm-hmm. things like that to them. Mm-hmm. See, the first time I was going from home to home, I came out of a Mennonite home and I turned on the ignition in the car and the radio just comes on full blast. Mm-hmm. But in the mm-hmm. meantime, the kids who were outside, they were inside the car trying to operate the radio because mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what they had heard from mm-hmm. those vendors on a given Sunday. Yeah. Now, but the second time I figured this is, no, this is a pattern. I better start locking it up. At least yeah. they think I'm the one that's trying to attract them or something. Oh, with the, that was yeah. my biggest fear. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, it would be, uh, I would be conflated with the other and say, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, he's just one of those guys. Yeah, exactly. Because I had documentation from the community leader explaining to them what I was doing and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. asking them to basically to respond to the survey I was doing and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. But in, in the process, I was able, I ran into this dimension. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of, uh, of interest to me was when I was asking the leaders, well, how do you select the teacher? Mm-hmm. You know, just that curiosity, how are people hired? What credentials? Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, and no one in the community had an education beyond sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And the community in Capolino was completely uh, in low German. There was no, uh, no link whatsoever to any type of educational system by the state or federal government. Mm-hmm. And, uh, much to my chagrin, the, the leader told me, well, you know, it, it seems to us, uh, the council that makes the decisions that when someone's crops f- uh, fail, then they decide they want to teach. <laughs> <laughs> the worst stereotype. Of, yeah. <laughs> they can't do teach, right? Yeah, exactly. And so in terms of the hierarchy, yeah, yeah it's pretty. So it was uh, interesting to, mm-hmm. and again, someone who may be the teacher may be hoping to re-boost their agricultural pursuits. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know who else would be in charge, but yeah. uh, it was interesting. The, there's a, I got some slides where I showed up like at noon and the teacher was not there. So they I asked the boys and girls if I could take a picture of them. So they mm-hmm. sort of lined up, but the, some things don't change no matter where you go. The older boys wanted to push the young boys so that when I took the picture, they would come out of being next to the girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, and, and I do have those, uh, like I said, those slides, uh, mm-hmm. somewhere. But yeah. the, those, the relationships with, with the outside, uh, especially in Capulin, where like visits to the outside would be more or less supervised for an mm-hmm. adult mm-hmm. and so on, rather than, let's say, young people going out on their own yeah. on a Sunday or something like mm-hmm. that. And you can, uh, mm-hmm. somewhere I have a slide of, a uh, from a, a southern campo, the um, a, a tractor being used to haul this huge, like trailer, mm-hmm. but this uh, that took people in mm-hmm. and out. Yeah. While in Capulín, that same uh, tractor mm-hmm. uh, would not have, for example, tires. No, oh, absolutely. Because mm-hmm. if it didn't have tires, then it's an instrument of work. Mm-hmm. Because I would ask those questions. I thought mm-hmm. it was a piece of junk. Oh, yeah. no, no, that is, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, and the, the front tires were used on the buggies. Mm-hmm. Nothing was wasted because those are solid rubber tires. It's yeah. not like you're going you know, exactly. to feel the bumps here. <laughs> and he was explaining. And yeah. I went into their homes. I was, of course, uh, being able to judge the, the, the lack of, uh, let's say, pectorials in the mm-hmm. house. And, mm-hmm. But I did notice I had a refrigerator. Yeah. So I asked, well, if there's no electricity in the colony and so on, it was more like, uh, I, my question was, how do you get the refrigerator to run? Yeah. But his response was conditioned. It is not my fault that it runs on gas. <laughs> <laughs> so we were doing an end run uh-huh. <laughs> on the, uh, on the system. Here. Yeah. Because exactly. I never even knew there was such a thing as a gas powered refrigerator. Yeah, exactly. Never in my entire life had I heard of that. <laughs> uh, I just mm-hmm. assumed, well, the, the first thought that came to mind was that mm-hmm. maybe the, it was an old refrigerator 
and then somebody puts ice blocks the old fashioned oh, way. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's actually the, the ice uh -huh. chest type of thing, but yeah. no, this thing actually ran. Yeah. So I think that was the, the other area where there was a, a point of conflict with the Mexican uh, population had to do most the governor of Chihuahua publicly declared that there could be no ta two types of Mexicans when it came to military service. Mm, mm -hmm, yeah. and even, you know, Mennonite night history with that, that is, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a huge, huge problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, which would have cost people to take off. And they claim mm -hmm. that some people actually felt sufficiently threatened given their history in Canada and Russia, mm -hmm. that they would want to go someplace mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. At least in this case, to another part of Mexico, mm -hmm. like Zacatecas or mm -hmm. Tamaulipas, where you had small colonies. Yeah. But they, um, where it generated a, a conflict among uh, Mennonites was that they were trying to negotiate with the government to have a sort of like a non combatant role, which is mm -hmm. what, let's say, happened in Russia, what mm -hmm. could become what's man. Or, a variety of other things. Mm -hmm. Kind uh, of an alternative service type. Basically, yeah. yeah. What mm -hmm. we had here in the U.S. is you can join the Peace Corps, for example, and that mm -hmm. was the case. Uh, but then the question of uh, just being on a list mm -hmm. was not going to be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, then the more traditional Mennonites, the community leaders show up to your to the army headquarters are in mm -hmm. charge of drafting mm -hmm. and basically tell them the military they look like us they're okay if they don't draft mm. them <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that the Mennonites now who are more addressing modern and so on and if you drive a car and so on yeah the other Mennonites were throwing them under the bus <laughs> right yeah exactly exactly <laughs> I, I thought I thought it was amusing and it was funny but it was very oh. very controversial wow. and very real for them yeah. and, and you know that even a Mexican military service unless you're drafted for active duty which would be mm -hmm. a very small minority mm -hmm. I think they typically have enough people who join the service mm -hmm. that, that was not necessary uh, it, when that doesn't happen then the rest actually report on a, for a year on a Sunday mm -hmm. and they do military drills and mm -hmm. they do more civic duty actually it's more mm -hmm. like they're planting trees mm -hmm. uh, helping with a mm -hmm. vaccination campaign mm -hmm. you name it depending on uh, and, and if there's been a, a flood or something in mm -hmm. the area mm -hmm. and th then they this... would be called upon and I say well that that's uh, that's the image that I have of uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. The slide of the Hutterites, for example, all volunteering to help out during a flood in the yeah. Dakotas. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so a civic mm -hmm. duty, not, mm -hmm. not that you're required by anybody, but here yeah. the, the the Mexican army has traditionally been used. That mm -hmm. those those people, you you only have them for a day. Yeah. So I mean, there's not much you can do. So the idea, I remember here across the border, so mm -hmm. plant a lot of the park trees who were mm -hmm. planted by the by the army. So that, mm -hmm. that, that generated friction, particularly the notion that the mm -hmm. government has uh, gone back on its word. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the initial conditions of uh, uh, the migration was mm -hmm. the military service exemption. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. But see, the governor was trying, to, and, and I don't know exactly where a lot of the pressure may have come, because there is some it's one of those things that because you're successful, <laughs> then there's going to be envy <laughs> mm -hmm. and so on yeah. from others. There are people who are mm -hmm. not going to like that big sign on the highway promoting fruit growing mm -hmm. in Germany. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's the, the nationalistic mm -hmm. aspect. Yeah. And, and yet, you know, when they first arrived there in the 20s, so, uh, once again, they bought land that was mm -hmm. not really the best of land in terms mm -hmm. of rainfall and what have you. Yeah. The Mexican government offered to intervene. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, no, we gave our word. Mm -hmm. yeah, if it's a bad, good or bad decision, that's it. Yeah. We all, we paid it in the story, you know. Yeah. And that, so, and contrary, I think, to the minority stereotype where I began to find out from other uh, people that were introduced to me is that 
they had pretty good access to to legal services mm -hmm. and could mm -hmm. use their clout well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they they you know depending on the situation they they, they could uh, defend themselves and and I mm -hmm. think they hear that when you can see a comparison let's say with the Mormon colonies mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that had had to fend off encroachment from uh, the cartels mm -hmm. within their own mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and had the power to even get the president to show up and yeah. announce how proud they are that they just kicked them out that sent yeah. in the army that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a kind of like a point of two ethnic minority groups that are almost, you know, next to each other there. Yeah. And, bo and both had to use, come up with means to redress a mm -hmm. grievance uh, mm -hmm. by leveraging state or federal. Mm -hmm. And they, like other citizens, will face the issue of uh, state versus federal conflicts. Mm -hmm. And then you get caught in the middle of that. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it be policy for agriculture or... Yeah. A variety of things, uh, you'll be caught in the middle of that one. Yeah. And that sort of conflict that arises when, you know, a group um, that is um, in many ways separatist, separatist and isolationist, mm -hmm. but leveraging the power of the government um, when it seems convenient and then eschewing those, uh, that same power, like when it is not, and yeah, yeah I felt that they were very adept mm -hmm. and that mo a lot of people felt uh, that they were not because I met this guy who worked, uh, he was uh, an agronomist who worked for the agricultural bank mm -hmm. and he had helped them out in some of the uh, issues they had to resolve. Mm -hmm. and, and I was part of what I was able to see also by the 90s was when the Mexican economy is not quite recovering as fast. Uh, for example, Mennonites traveling to uh, to the border to see a physician, to give you an example, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and actually going from restaurant to restaurant selling cheese and mm -hmm. what have you. For sure. And, they, and I would talk to them, invite them to lunch, what yeah. have you, and yeah, well, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to raise enough money to pay for my transport and to pay for the doctor and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, I can't just wait back there and think there's, I'm going to be able to get that money and because it's not going to happen. So right, therefore, yeah. i got to hustle this. And, yeah, for sure. And you begin to see then all of a sudden some of the stores that sell Mexican food on this side, more on a retail or kind of low-scale basis, advertising queso menonita and mm -hmm. so on, which you, you could see. Mm -hmm. That and that I, I thought it was uh, in the adaptation to economic conditions. Mm, mm -hmm. And if I recall correctly, then there was a number of people who took off to Canada. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If they couldn't make it, that was mm -hmm. the only thing you could do. Mm -hmm. And you can see a lot of cars through with uh, Canadian plates mm -hmm. once in a while. You know, depending on the season and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And feeling the, the migration to Seminole as well during that period of time. Just, well, yeah, yeah, that was, but like at the same time, this group is going and the, mm -hmm. they're going south. Yeah. And they were going, they were not going to an area that had any Mennonite settlements that I know of before. Mm -hmm. They were the first one. Yeah. And I never, I was, uh, unfortunately, it was not that easy to get copies of newspapers and things like, you know, to, to duplicate, but mm -hmm. they, they show me the write up they did it over in in Buenos Aires and mm -hmm. Santa Rosa of yeah. coming. Yeah. And I, at one time I wanted to to visit just to uh, to see how they were faring and yeah, what they were doing in terms of their program. Part of the allure over there is that well, a lot of us know Spanish already and yeah. so on. Yeah, for sure. And yet you probably heard the ones in the lease. Uh, the most successful migrant, uh, Mennonite migrants to Belize, were the ones who spoke English and mm -hmm. were able to benefit from government help in terms oh, of technical okay, yeah. assistance and yeah. so on. Yeah. Uh, they, they basically could manipulate the system better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, someone who was more of a new arrival or <laughs> mm -hmm. from Canada yeah. <laughs> would pay off better to have him in your group if you went to. Yeah. Because I. 
I think some of the ones that went to Belize were also motivated by a federal government attempt to put them into the in the social security system. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which they felt, well, if there's a list, <laughs> that's right. not going to work. Right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know where that leads. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah. that was uh, a, a concern that some had for relocating, which mm-hmm. I never, because the whole idea was to incorporate the agricultural sector into the medical care system, which is pretty mm-hmm. much an urban mm-hmm. right, yeah. phenomenon in Mexico. Absolutely. But the urban uh, rural dwellers felt, okay, you're going to take all this extra money away from me mm-hmm. for medical care. I'm not likely to ever see or it was right. quality is questionable. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and they probably would have been correct. Mm-hmm. But just, just the threat, though, right, seemed them to tell. have an impact on mm-hmm. people to rethink their position. Mm-hmm. But again, you, you find factors that, are, that affect the decision to move but looking for a greener place Mm -hmm. seems to be the the primary reason realizing often that certain amount of growth cannot take place anymore Mm -hmm. and just that's why you still see the expansion Mm -hmm. here in northern chihuahua yeah i don't know if they expanded down toward durango or not i don't think that's the case Mm -hmm. but the area right there of course all you know, agriculture valuable and so on. So I don't think there's a lot of mm-hmm. places where you could expand mm-hmm. at a reasonable mm-hmm. cost. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why, like the Durango colonies, like over time, like have just kind of remained like more mm-hmm. isolated because there's yeah. not that economic and agricultural um, ability to um, expand. And for some of them, that's, you know, the feature of Durango is then remaining more isolationist. Yeah, I, I don't even know the rationale for them settling there. Walter Schmiede House was a German who basically was the welcoming committee, the organizing mm-hmm. committee for their migration when they first arrived. Yeah. Yeah, but the, to the best of my knowledge, he was not Mennonite. Mm, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just a German presence because of the mines. As yeah. well as English, for that matter. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. So you've been telling some um, interesting stories about um, interactions. Mm. Um, the the man who was you know caught with uh, how much money was it? It was over ten thousand dollars. Yeah, um, no, they, it was over ten. Yeah. 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 But it's funny, he's looking for his passport, so he can't find the passport, so he's, well, let me see. Oh, and then just all his this money is <laughs> like, well. <laughs> but then it was obvious he wasn't uh-huh. trying to hide anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so that, that interaction being particularly memorable, because he's calling you up when yeah. getting into this, you know, legal trouble at the border. Um, but what are some other kind of um, memorable interactions that you have, sort of like in that vein? Well... Some of the early detection of drug trafficking mm-hmm. uh, occurred uh, the right when you cross by automobile from Mexico into the U.S. Every so often, they'll stop traffic and then put cars back to back so that you could not evade or get out of that. And then they'll bring a pack of uh, a dog or whatever to and then circulate mm-hmm. the area. Yeah, and they uh, it was in a motorhome. Mm-hmm. The whole thing that was going to Canada that they found uh, that the the seats and what have you mm-hmm. were all packed in this case with uh, with marijuana. Oh yeah. And yeah, then yeah, all yeah. of a sudden they the they began to pay more attention to who's mm-hmm. coming r- rather than assume mm-hmm. that uh, these individuals are mm-hmm. not likely to be drug mm-hmm. trafficker. And, and then that was in the late eighties that that motorhome was found with uh, the marijuana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then, and then all of a sudden you start seeing articles in the newspaper with the pictures and so on. Yeah. Uh, which regrettably, some of the mm-hmm. stuff was done to point out, like, uh, oh, you see, they're not as perfect as they, mm-hmm. <laughs> they mm-hmm. claim they are mm-hmm. type of thing, you know? Yeah. Well, and there's this sort of, um, 
what you call it, like fascination or this sort of um, sensationalism that sort of like oh, yeah. arises around like, oh, you know, Mennonite drug traffickers or, yeah. you know, Mennonites behaving badly or, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I can, and I can imagine, well, if you look at all the articles that are uh, from the newspaper dealing with uh, the Miss Chihuahua pageant and mm -hmm. so on, because yeah. she did not fit that mm -hmm. up. And to Mennonites, mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. did not either. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about your um, knowledge of or interaction of uh, Miss Chihuahua 1987, mm. who was Mennonite. Well, I I was looking and I said at the newspaper in Juarez one morning having breakfast, and I find that uh, there's a uh, a picture of all the state pageant beauty pageant winners mm -hmm. who are welcomed by the president in his official residence. And they're all attired in the uh, dress that's peculiar to that particular state. Usually mm -hmm. their own committees will dictate how you need to be dressed. Mm -hmm. And of course, each state's going to publish the picture of their winner. So yeah. here's the one from in Juarez. And, I, mm -hmm. and that's how I realized. And the badge, incidentally, took for Chihuahua had taken place in Juarez. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. in Chihuahua City, because they rotate that. But Oh, yeah. Nonetheless, this that year was in Juarez. I think it was 85 or something oh, like okay, that. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, so I said, I'll be darn, let me look into it. So I went yeah. to the newspaper yeah, 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 and yeah. found out all about that. And I called her up. And that's mm -hmm. when I, I was asking her, and she was someone she was a student in communication. And mm -hmm. So she was totally atypical. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and when I mentioned to you that I asked her, well, why did you tell me? There's a direct quote here, but mm -hmm. you said, I'm surprised that I won in spite of who I am. Yeah. And she said, well, I was the third place winner mm -hmm. in both demos, so I was surprised I was able to jump from third place winner there to first place mm -hmm. for the whole, well, to win the whole state yeah, absolutely. pageant. In which, well, now you have a broader com committee, so it doesn't mm -hmm. have the biases that she thought existed there mm -hmm. or not, she would be in a better position to know. Yeah. But, uh, and she lived in the city of Cuauhtémoc as an urban dweller. There's, mm, a, there's mm -hmm. an urban community mm -hmm. of Mennonites, yeah. uh, aside from once in the surrounding mm -hmm. camps, yeah. who then tend to be more uh, modern and mm -hmm. dwellers. And for her, being a Mennonite was a mere their religion. Yeah. yeah. Those were her words to me. Yeah. And then she asked, she told me about her trajectory, uh, her family trajectory mm -hmm. into that area from Russia to, I think it was Sweden and then Mexico or mm -hmm. the southern part and then up north. Yeah. So she was never part of that migration that came, you know, from Russia to Canada mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. over into Mexico. But then from the outside, still kind of associated with that migration. Oh, exactly. Then, yeah. See, they, the Mexican public did not make a distinction whatsoever. Yeah. To, to them, she was one of the Mennonites that they mm -hmm. had seen. Even when people yeah. saw them here, yeah, well, those are the Mennonites that come shopping here. Yeah. Who are going over to Cielo Vista, the mall. Right, whatever. exactly, exactly. <laughs> but uh, that was not... Um, I, I just found it so, so interesting how emblematic her victory was of mm -hmm. the, how the, the state was looking at its own ethnic composition and mm -hmm. how she came to embody the diversity yeah. that they would have. Yeah. To the extent that they did not dress her up like a typical northern mm -hmm. Mexican, uh, you know, the attire that they used, that it would mm -hmm. be like Sonora or frankly or Tamaulipas, there wouldn't be any much of a difference. Yeah. Uh, and you can see in this, in the, some of the slides that, uh, that you be, I'll be glad to, uh, to give you the, in the pageant, they do have people dress mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And then you have the Tarmaras and you have the Conquistadores, all of them mm -hmm. are in the pageant that represent who, this is who Chihuahua is and we're yeah. very proud of this. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I thought that was, that was interesting, but again, also some men and I's would, mm -hmm not see that positively. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just yeah. said no dice. Yeah, exactly. Um, so um, over a period of time, um, there's people that you got to know particularly well. Mm -hmm. um, 
Who are some of those people? And then um, do you, are you still in contact um, with some of those people? No, I haven't been there in a long time. As you know, mm -hmm. during uh, the violence here on the border, mm -hmm. which the State Department has explicitly identified as a dangerous zone, mm -hmm. which prohibits me from uh, of traveling on what would be state business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and they simply would not authorize the... Mm -hmm. The, the trip, I could go do things on my own, but not... Right, as an official, like yeah. in a scholarly capacity exactly. or an official, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nor could I send the students or anybody else. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I do have other people that could have done that, but that the last thing they want to do is read about anything happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to someone you sent. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So no, I have to be... No, no, I have not... Uh, done that uh, in a while we mm -hmm. had um, like by that time i had switched my interest over to the Tayamara region mm -hmm. so that was uh, mm -hmm. more inland and you had to fly in and so on so for it was, sure it's not something i could say on my way there yeah i'll stop and absolutely yeah 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 with the i think with mormon colonies which were adjacent to the mennonite lands and everything i did go a couple of times, and one, one time I I did stop, but by the, see the people I knew had left mm -hmm. to, to Argentina. Yeah, and so yeah, your contacts yeah. had kind of right. left the area. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that the, for example, that the Newfold brothers probably stay because whatever Mennonite group replaced the other one mm -hmm. would still be a source of business for them. Right, exactly. So there was no economic interest. Yeah, and, and not everyone was going to leave. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I think they were expecting some people from Zacatecas to mm, have already mm -hmm. started relocating, to yeah. taking up the the space. Yeah. And that some of the people from Zacatecas had been there before, mm -hmm. had gone to Zacatecas and were now coming back. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it gets a little difficult to trace. Absolutely, yeah, because <laughs> everybody kind of is in, in constant movement. And yeah, so, and yeah, some of people very... actually went, even went back to Canada and came back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So if you're trying to draw a map and numbers, boy, you give up on yeah. that awfully fast. Uh, yeah. Not just migration, but transmigration mm -hmm. and then a mm -hmm. constant transmigration. Yeah. Right. And, and I never, like I said, I really want to take the opportunity. If I ever go to Argentina, I'll probably stop by. But see, I yeah. don't know anybody now. Yeah, absolutely. Most of the people I, I knew were the, uh, the eldest. Someone had told me that, heck, who had passed away or mm, and that mm -hmm. they knew that he had come back one time because his uh, mother-in-law I think had passed away mm, mm -hmm. yeah. I even wonder sometimes you know they have the, some of the colonies up north have names like uh, Cuervo, Las Virginias mm -hmm. and one of them is Buenos Aires oh, and I always wonder if, if, that, if there was something if that had any connection, because I, I couldn't quite get from how they decided to move to that location. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I could have understood that they said we're going to Paraguay. Mm -hmm. That's where you have other yeah, existing colonies colony. or there, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But uh, over there, they were going to be totally on their own, no new persons. Yeah. I mean, no, no one they knew, I should say, uh, would be there. Yeah. Because I even thought, I bet you maybe they'll run and get some help from. Why? It's not mm -hmm, that far mm -hmm. away, but yeah. distance-wise, well, yeah, it would be probably like going from here to Colorado or right, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. still a ways. Yeah, exactly. But to me, the interesting thing is how they were pulling the the move. Mm -hmm. When uh, half of us go and the other half stay, and then and then support the group that yeah. went. Yeah, and then that uh, that takes a lot of communal. Yeah. Organization mm -hmm. and effort, trust, confidence. Yeah. They were showing me all the stuff that had already been sent by ship. Mm -hmm. you know, they built their own containers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, their own. Over here, we call them Connex containers. Mm -hmm. And they built metal containers in which they could pack a lot of the stuff and yeah. just send it over. Including, I don't know if they took equipment or they thought it would be easier to buy, you know, agricultural equipment over there. But yeah. And I don't know if anyone who's written about the group in, 
in Argentina mm -hmm. since they left. Yeah. And, and that was my interest to do a follow-up, which would have not been linguistic work anymore. It was more on how have you adapted to the new situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially when you have government changing, uh, mm -hmm. does that change the relationship with yeah. you? But you know, they usually would go into an area that the government was very pleased to have mm -hmm. popular. I mean, that is the history. Yeah. <laughs> From the Crimea all the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. I, one of the things I never did, but that I found out is that you could actually take a, a cruise. Mm hmm. From the Black Sea. Oh, who is that through? It's the, like, Mennonite Heritage Tours, I think, something, yeah. and like kind of trace. Yeah. Right, because some of them go through yeah. the Rhine mm -hmm. River, uh, yeah. but then they were also listing the other tours. So mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't afford any of that yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I was not going to get any support for that, but I thought, well, we really should go mm -hmm. to that uh, area because yeah. I, I wanted to read a little bit more about also the the World War II history mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, mm -hmm. or even before that, because many of these uh, Mennonites had to have been identified as the Kulaks by Stalin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right in some of those German locations, some of those uh, Chortitsa, for example, yeah, uh -huh. the, the old Colonier uh -huh. base, uh, that's the area where the Russians took ethnic Germans from Konigsberg when they took it over after World War II mm -hmm. and relocated them there. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than to Germany like other countries were doing. Yeah. Hungary, Romania, Poland. If you're German, you're going mm -hmm. back to inside the German borders. Yeah. And you're not going to stay here mm -hmm. anymore. And I, and I thought that was uh, somewhere I have a slide of the group taking off on a Mm -hmm. By train from from Konigsberg. Mm -hmm. I forget what the current name is. Uh, Kaliningrad, I think. It's oh, called. yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. that that's the only Baltic port or area that Russia technically has now. Yeah, that it doesn't yeah, yeah. have Latvia, Estonia, and the other places. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to them, Germans are Germans, which still come all together. Right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, but I thought. Uh, uh, somewhere I have a slide I think I got from the Sawatsky book about uh, a hospital, a Mennonite hospital mm -hmm. in southern Russia, which mm -hmm. automatically implies that you obviously have uh, all these people who are being trained at higher with higher levels of education, sophistication, right, yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think within the community. Um, for a longer period of time, the the group that did the migration from Canada to Mexico was sort of like stereotyped as seen as sort of like, oh, like um, uneducated or fleeing education. And, and so you have sort of these different strains. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of interesting how um, the colony in, 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 in Mexico is sort of like comprised of sort of the most separatist of the separatist. Yeah. You know, at that time. Um, well, when there was one time when they were still, they needed money to try to f uh, finance the move. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Jacobo Leuven was telling me, well, they wanted me to contact groups like in the Mennonite Central Committee. That's how I found out that the Red Cops used to do a lot of that for them. Mm -hmm. For some mm -hmm. reason, that had gone nowhere. Oh, okay. So they wanted to identify Mennonite groups that were like themselves. Mm, mm -hmm. So I told them, well, if, you're, if they're like yourself, mm -hmm. they're obviously not going to pick up a phone because they don't have one. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know that they would necessarily trust uh, me. And if they, yeah. if yeah, they yeah, themselves, yeah. or for whatever reason, for example, are mm -hmm. no longer... Uh, conversant uh, in low German, then you, you're, mm -hmm. you're definitely out of luck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they were saying we want to do, we want support in business, but mm -hmm. it has to be from people mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. like us. Mm 
Mm-hmm. We don't want any modern types. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys work uh, through mm-hmm. an interpreter or exclusively in Spanish? In English? Spanish. Exclusively in Spanish, yeah. With the editor of the newspaper, he, he knew English quite well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, with him, it was usually mm-hmm. in English. It kind of since he felt more comfortable or yeah. whatever. For one thing, if he spoke in English to me, the others would not understand. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Even Absolutely. within this household. Yeah. <laughs> so when we were having, let's say, dinner at his uh, place, and that was some more of an informal setting, and then we're using Spanish. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I did get to meet the people who worked there in the bookstore and mm-hmm. the newspaper. And I, and I just, uh, I haven't been down there in... Even to visit the the bookstore mm-hmm. in, in, the, in a long time. Yeah, but that that was done in in, in Spanish. And that well, that mm-hmm. bookstore turned out to be a wealth of uh, information. And oh yeah, what have you books? Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think of a. There's a guy who wrote a book not too long ago, Miller, Tom Miller. Have you seen his book? And he he did an original book, at, which is more like a travel log mm-hmm. of the border. Okay, mm-hmm. where he travels the whole border and yeah. tries to tell how, what, what it looks like. Yeah, if he just if this was the U.S., where right, he just took a slice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, it's yeah, yeah, very yeah. different than when North and South and all that. Absolutely, go this yeah. Way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> look at look at the scar, so to speak, you know, and yeah, uh, for sure. and he he wrote. Uh, a book, and he talks about how he was intimidated and followed by Mennonite and pickup trucks mm-hmm. who were not too happy about him asking questions or oh, for sure, yeah, in a variety of areas. And mm-hmm. when, when it's a well, it, and you can understand when you start getting into the, they don't, they definitely don't want to read or about. The group being projected in a negative fashion, particularly mm-hmm. in a stereotypic fashion, because sure. uh, many of these guys are kind of ninja researchers in a room. In yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. It. And <laughs> whatever I saw, that's what it must be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, corroboration and things like that are not necessarily what something they're going to do. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> and, and I saw the book and I saw some of the peop- things that they cited, and it was like they did a search of any. Thing that was done in the area mm-hmm. and found a place where they could sort of claim they had consulted that material mm-hmm. but there was really no reference or anything per right. se that would tell you that yeah. they understood what mm-hmm. the, the the work that they were citing was all about right yeah <laughs> i think he, he did i can't remember if that was if, that, if it was tom miller or not but we had him make a presentation here mm-hmm. a number of years ago uh, Howard Campbell, mm-hmm. the, the chair of anthropology, is the guy who he brought him in. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. said, he had asked me, he said, yeah, yeah, I don't need to bring him in. So he was, I, I guess he felt he was pretty much like scoring that drum out of me. Oh, I scored it out of the community <laughs> in pickup yeah. trucks. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently this happened all the way to wherever. I guess people were monitoring to make sure he had left or something. Oh, or okay, yeah. He had felt threatened because he didn't know who it yeah, was. For sure. Yeah, He didn't know if it was like, is it, are these people maybe associated with the cartel or something? And Right, yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. where you have to be very careful mm-hmm. not to do mm-hmm. a- anything mm-hmm. like that. I, I rode in a small plane one time up to the Wachochi, the... Uh, it's a city in, in southern Chihuahua that has one of the old Indian boarding school type. Oh, okay, and yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're doing work there, and in, in that particular darn flight, we're talking about five, six people, okay? Yeah. The PRI mm-hmm. organizer for the region was mm-hmm. in that flight. Oh, and we okay, We have yeah. to stay in the same hotel, mm-hmm. and we had breakfast together. You had to, like, chaperone. So the, the P, well, this was there, the, the, mm-hmm. the, but the opposition, the mm-hmm. driver, yeah. who was the, the taxi driver, because he had those big old stickers that from the PAN party. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I was there, like, two, three days, and, yeah. and I, I was followed everywhere I went, because they sure they were sure that I was with this guy organizing. 
Oh, and that if anything, wow. the other guy was some kind of a lure so that I could go and organize. Yeah, yeah. And because yeah. I'm going to different places, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. And uh, there was probably, uh, and, and I, I saw him one time and called him the what was look working up the wrong tree. I'm yeah, yeah. An independent researcher. I'm doing work on your edu- and the radio station and mm-hmm. the school and. Uh, the other people just happen to be on the same flight. Yeah, exactly. He wouldn't buy it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not here to influence any kind of socio-political. Yeah, okay, man, you don't want to get caught in the middle of that. Oof, no. Which, as it is, often plagued by conflicts between the uh, well, not only the the drug runners and mm-hmm. and the people, but also there's conflicts over taking over the land mm-hmm. for drug growing, and then the yeah. timber. Yeah. barons and yeah. it gets very complicated yeah absolutely but for an outsider that's the last thing you want to be caught up in <laughs> right exactly and just to have an awareness of those dynamics going in yeah yeah but, and that told i just didn't uh i thought it was funny because this guy just made the assumption or somebody there made the mm-hmm. assumption that this is the dynamic view here. yeah 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 <laughs> But in the in the Mennonite communities, I, you know, I never had any difficulties. I went back one time and I wanted to take some slides of the church. Mm, mm-hmm. But since by that time they had they were very close to leaving, mm-hmm. somebody else who was not leaving was mm-hmm. now in charge of the building. Oh, okay, yeah. And and they could not get authorization from the new community leaders mm, mm-hmm. to let me in to take pictures. Because the one in Capulín, the church is just about every, as modern as anything you would find here in the U.S. Mm, mm-hmm. Superb sound system, yeah, organ, yeah. you name it, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, part of the contrast for me is to show how sparsely furnished and so on. This is, this is a, mm-hmm. which in itself is unusual, a two-story adobe. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the only two-story mm-hmm. building. Yeah. And and the rest, yeah. the architecture itself shows you some of the homes with a higher pitch that are not necessary mm-hmm. because we don't have that snow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just that architecture yeah. kind of. And yet the other things were done where you buy these big blocks of cement mm-hmm. and just put them together, and those are your walls. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then those tend to have either. A, a lower pitch or, or flat, mm-hmm. and many of the other homes were adobe. Yeah, but as you get down into the southern part and everything, mm-hmm. you can see some homes like like your Lena suburban track here. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> side so, by side. So those, mm-hmm. I mean, the architecture itself po- points to the differences between be- the colonies between the, between the southern and northern yeah. uh, colonies. The Absolutely. fact that the northern uh, the southern colony, right in front of the church, has an orchard. Mm-hmm. Well, the northern colony cannot have an orchard. Yeah. Because fruit growing means that you have to take care of, if there's going to be a freeze on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you can't take care of the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> of the freeze and their exactly. winter crop. Yeah. And of course, they're farther up north, which would make them more likely to have such a thing, a freeze. Yeah, that's true. And that's because I had asked them, how come you're not into fruit growing? Like, I said, well, no, we can't do that. Mm-hmm. And they told me, you talk about interaction with the Mexican nationals, mm-hmm. that once Mexican nationals figure mm-hmm. the preservation of the Sabbath, mm-hmm. that they often would attempt to pay debts on Sunday. Oh, yeah. They couldn't accept it. And they said, well, I tried to pay. I tried you. to pay my debts, but it was a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no, you do, oh. you do see some. There were several instances that that came to mind uh, mm-hmm. right now of mm-hmm. how they were in this, and of course they know they're being taken advantage of. Yeah, and they don't yeah. care for it, but they're gonna right, follow. but still hold that. That's interesting. You know, they they they've told me about mm-hmm. well in the southern colony they gave me the story of a couple of people and how they came to join their their send their kids to that school in their community because yeah. now people coming are from all over the place. It's yeah. not it's not a camp mm-hmm. in the traditional sense of the North. There right. are other Southern camps. Yeah, yes, exactly. you still have a camp and many of those people in the camp do mm-hmm. not belong mm-hmm. to the new religion. Yeah. Then you have others who are actually bossed. Yeah. Like you would in an American school. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<coughs> and she told me the stories of how the minister had was uh, getting on their case because I guess as well, it's not my. I bought this truck and it has a radio. I don't want mm -hmm. to take it out. Yeah. Because it's going to have less value when I sell it. Right. Yeah. And of course, the minister says, "Yeah, but you don't have to play the radio." Yeah. 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 <laughs> In different oh. com areas that where they felt again, religion was encroaching on their lifestyle. Too. Yeah. Uh, for sure. But in many cases, they had been expelled or excommunicated. Yeah, absolutely. I think the rate of intermarriage for the Mennonite colonies is uh, very, very small. Probably mm -hmm. less than 3%. Okay, or yeah. 1%, I think. It's in the city of Potemok, it was, I think it's around 3%. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so even in the city. <laughs> yeah, there's inter so that mm -hmm. tells you that there is some, mm -hmm. you know, interaction and and up here they were just they're actually giving me the examples of mm -hmm. people who had intermarried which is usually people who had become widows oh okay interesting yeah and so on but they mm -hmm. had been shunned yeah for the intermarriage yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well in the fact that they still remain there and what have you mm -hmm. yeah. so that uh show me to what extent they they would go out of their way to promote that mm-hmm you know, preservation of lifestyle and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, part of what I had to do when I still didn't uh, look at Anabaptist values and so on, mm -hmm. so that then people can understand why things I'm talking to them about yeah. are happening. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Not, not, well, not serving it like on a jury where the death penalty could be awarded and. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't know about Seminole. It was mm -hmm. uh, because I, I knew that I don't think they got that they were able to preserve their school system, right? The school system yeah. in Seminole is is very interesting because uh, different churches run their schools and kind of autonomously um, because of Mennonite churches. Mennonite churches, okay. um, because of the way that the um, the laws are in Texas, like it's it's very. Yeah. Um, Kind of easy to set that kind of like your autonomous school church up and yeah. so um there's kind of a spectrum of like um very conservative kind of old colony system schools there in town um all the way up to um kind of your typical um kind of like evangelical church school mm -hmm. um and so for many years when I, when I was growing up back in the um back in the 90s uh it's very rare for Mennonites to be attending public school, high school. Um, my graduating class um, you could count the number of, of, of Mennonites that graduated from this school, you know, like on, you know, two hands. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen like in the past, like 15 to 20 years, um, just an explosion of, of Mennonites attending the public school. And so there's been a shift oh, okay. in the culture there as well. And it's just kind of been fascinating to watch. Yeah. And kind I of thought they time. eventually would. Mm -hmm. would be the case oh yeah mm -hmm. but and of course it's always the the policies of economics of mm -hmm. who can counter as a student to get softies from the state yeah yeah <laughs> which makes that makes a difference Absolutely. Uh, when Jacobo would come to my house I showed them a couple of videos about a, there was a program they had of an Amish community in Pennsylvania and it's experiences of a young boy and it's, uh, especially the younger kid who's going to, mm -hmm. to a regular school now oh okay yeah and he can attend some of these functions like the halloween party and all for this sure any kind of dances or and anything then like that. he's uh he's caught uh sneaking out of that because mm -hmm. he wants to be with his friends at the halloween oh yeah and yeah, things yeah, yeah. like that yeah and he my friend was i was wanting to see what his reaction was and mm -hmm. Uh, he was uh, telling me, and what I found fascinating is, uh, and they still wear beards. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah. now we're we're the, we're the fashion. They're the old style. Ones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I, um, okay, I said, yeah. <laughs> because they they were definitely the I would mm -hmm. assume the most conservative groups. No, I yeah. had. I made a presentation one time with the slides and 
and uh, there was some uh, someone from the from the Amish uh, mm-hmm. community yeah. and asked me, well, could you tell me what the distinction is? Yeah, for sure. And he said, that's simple. Mm-hmm. So it's a man and I, it's a bad Amish. <laughs> 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 okay, oh. well, <laughs> you're not going to go at that, you know. <laughs> so oh. some so of mm-hmm. the divisions, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. obviously have not been forgotten. Mm-hmm. But I, I thought it was interesting to get that. Well, and especially the, this idea of things that would seem um, not noticeable or very arbitrary sort of mm-hmm. to an outside community, like yeah. carry such weight, you know, things like um, the rubber tires or, you know, all of these things that to the outside is like, well, what is that even about? But just the yeah. huge, you know, implications of those things. No, 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 it is. Yeah. It's, it's one of those. Uh, and that's why they control their education mm-hmm. system in that sense that they want to make sure that we don't have those intrusions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the new school had, for example, pictures of uh, different uh, from magazines and things mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. that are going to show kids, for example, dressed with modern. Exactly. Well, that's yeah. not acceptable. Yeah. And downside, you could see the girls were dressed more traditionally. For sure. And then the, and the, well, the boys just had Western attire, period. Exactly. Which yeah. is what you would find in that part of Mexico. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when I compare their Spanish proficiency, academic proficiency overall, mm-hmm. uh, it, it was below par of the public schools, federal public schools in, sure. the, in the area. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. At, at the sixth grade level, because yeah. that was the... And the three teachers that they had there had uh, were very, very young at the time, were mm-hmm. like 16, 17, 18. Oh, for sure. Uh, and one of them was officially the, the teacher of record as far as the federal government is concerned because mm-hmm. she had secundaria. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the principal, the, the male who becomes a minister, was really, mm-hmm. the, he's a principal, but he was, he, they couldn't use him as the principal of record. Right, for sure. And oh. they were all basically giving emergency certificates by the feds. Oh, And they, for the longest time, I, I would check when I stopped by mm-hmm. and say, hey, did you go for your training and all mm-hmm, that? Mm-hmm. And uh, no, 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 yeah. they were not. Yet in the state normal school, to which I was also affiliated, mm, mm-hmm. they were a couple of Mennonite students from the camps. Because when I asked th- those mm-hmm. people, separate from what I was yeah. judging, but I'm asking other parents, how do you feel yeah. about going beyond a sixth grade education? Yeah. And that community yeah. had no, certainly had no problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to put it in aspirational terms. Mm-hmm. Or say, well, what grade do you aspire to and so on? Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the very least, I wanted to capture would you object to they going on to secondaria right, and, and exactly. so on. And the the two people over there were obviously training to become teachers. Mm-hmm. And so those um, people that were at the normal school, um, were they they were training to go back to the the federally recognized mm-hmm. school, or did they end up going mm-hmm. out into other like federal system schools? Yeah. No, I I did not meet them. Mm-hmm. Regrettably, the whole group mm-hmm. of uh, professionals there in the school mm-hmm. uh, was eliminated in one fell swoop when their bus went off a ravine. Oh no! Going to a conference in Sonora. Oh. Okay. And because with wow. them we kept on doing the work with the Tarahumaras and, mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. have you. Yeah. So they uh, they would have been the exception to the rule. I don't think mm-hmm. they had been anyone from the Mennonite community attending there. And I would know about the, mm-hmm. the university and so on. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it was hard sometimes they're up to, well, I think so, but they weren't sure. So I like to exactly. get rather hard day. But this guy said, yeah, there are two people here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One question that I have is, um, you're talking about the work that you're doing in the Sierra Tarumara, and yeah. especially in recent years um, there in the Cuauhtémoc area, um, promotion of uh, the region as the um, Tierra de, de Tres Culturas. Mm-hmm. And I am wondering, um, at the time that you were doing your research, what, if any, type of interactions did you see between the Tarumara mm-hmm. and the Mennonite community? Gosh, none that I personally 
perceived because Chihuahua City had a, a, a zone in the city, which also Juarez acquired later on, where Taramara's fleeing mm -hmm. the, the poverty of the, mm -hmm. their own communities. Yeah. You know, they had settled in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and even a lot of the, let's say, the local museums and things that Ina has there, uh, catered more to the Taramara, uh, but I, I saw, in fact, no mention whatsoever of the Mennonite. Mm -hmm. And between there and, let's say, Paral, no, there was just no, there, I didn't see any of that, uh, mm -hmm. that connection. Mm -hmm. To them, the Mennonites were people north of Guatemoc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. many of them didn't know that there were settlements farther up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beyond, well, over here in the north, yeah. beyond from Buenaventura. Okay. So, zero contact, essentially. Yeah. The, at that time. And, I, and part of the reason, I think, for the men that I go to school is that typically the Mexican teachers have to do that one year of a, what we call in service training, but you're, they call it Servicio Social. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, and it's pretty much a practicum. For sure. And, uh, and they don't want to do it, uh, in a non-urban area. Oh, and, and they usually, okay, yeah. e even if they had to do it, but when it comes to landing a job, they mm -hmm. want to land a job in, because some of them are technically, okay, you, you graduated, I'm mm -hmm. sending you here. Well. Right, exactly. For mm -hmm. a lot of them, that's not going to. Right, yeah. Fly. So anybody who has contact is going to try to use that, or they'll spend mm -hmm. a good chunk of time trying to get out of there. Oh, okay, yeah. If they get the job. Oh, for sure. And build up the seniority to move to Chihuahua City. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's where their families are and everything, so it's yeah. hard just to uproot people. Yeah, for sure. But no, I, I can't think of mm -hmm. any, any, any examples. Mm -hmm. And a lot has to do also with the geographic divisions there for in sure. the area. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, because even to drive, I've driven, I used to fly in, but they took the flights out because of drug trafficking. For sure. <laughs> the last time it, we drove in, and I thought I was going to come back from Creel by just hopping a plane to mm -hmm. Chihuahua City. Well, no, there weren't any, so I just had to ride the bus. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot faster and more comfortable than the train. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th those areas, uh, when I, I, I don't think they never had any flights, for example, to Rubio mm -hmm. uh, or any of those uh, where the men in that communities are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the other is you, you need to fly also because of the hide or because you're going oops, I'm sorry way oh, no, no. <laughs> way below <laughs> yeah, exactly. ravines and canyons mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, what have you. Mm -hmm. But here the you know transportation mm -hmm. was not yeah. was never bad as far as the quality of the road or for sure. For sure. This is interesting. Uh a friend of mine was saying oh recently that was kind of like the big seasonally um some large groups of Tarumara would come down to work in the apple orchards and I was like oh like that's I hadn't heard of that before mm. yeah, um, I, didn't know. And yeah. I didn't know if that was like a recent development or there had been a history of mm. Tarumara labor coming for like agricultural work but uh no that's interesting well a lot of your traditional agricultural and ranching industry hands are in New Mexico Colorado mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah uh, the plains up there yeah Amarillo, etc. Yeah. So that means that uh, you're going to have shortages of labor. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I don't know here in the northern part how much labor there is actually uh, for it yeah. was seasonal. That's interesting. So um, we've kind of come towards the end of the interview here, um, mm. and I'm just wondering. Uh, what future research you would like to see in the region, um, and then also what your hopes are uh, for cross-cultural interactions uh, in the region. Well, I think of research would be nice to be able to map out for the entire, let's say, Mennonite community through an examination of 
various uh, spheres or sectors, like mm -hmm. the educational system in particular, uh, how, what's the interface with the Mexican national community? Mm -hmm. How are they integrating more, even measuring mm -hmm. levels of intermarriage, but particularly, mm -hmm. yeah. To what extent are people going beyond a sixth grade education? Because yeah. their position to me was very sure. We don't think we need to go beyond a sixth because if mm -hmm. that's the case, you're not going to be a good Mennonite. Mm -hmm. and, and if that's what you want to do, then mm -hmm. you need to leave here. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. That's the way they was explained that, that they would tell. Yeah, exactly. People, so that's like your ticket out. So I figured, well, mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to see that. Yeah. How that has changed. I, I think very useful in which I was not equipped to do, but it was really if someone could measure the dollar worth of the Mennonite uh, presence in oh, the economy. For sure. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Because I think they play a very, the banks and so on with that, but you know, you're not going to, I personally would not be able to get that type of data mm -hmm. from them. Yeah. It, it, it's hard mm -hmm. to. Are there industries mm -hmm. yeah. that have, uh, since many Mennonites have shifted, I think, from, especially in the southern area, from the agricultural sector to servicing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So now you have stores. Yeah, absolutely. Like a 7-Eleven, if you please, mm -hmm. but also services like repairing tractors mm -hmm. and uh, filling stations. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Irrigation systems. Yeah, uh, huge, storage, huge. Yeah. for example, of uh, fruit, cold storage, and that sort of thing. I got all those oh, wow. things. Yeah. and. If you have those, uh, uh, those would be great to be able to to identify mm -hmm. and to see how that change is going to happen. Because yeah. any of those people there, by definition, have to be dealing with a not just with a Mennonite community, but mm -hmm. with a Mexican national community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I did take uh, slides of some of the Mennonite businesses and mm -hmm. so on that yeah. would tell me why they. They had to make that adaptation, which is not yeah. too different, it seemed to me, from the adaptation they made in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I mm -hmm. said, well, this is kind of history mm -hmm. repeating mm -hmm. it, itself. Yeah, for sure. I, I just, in, and I think it would be, in, I don't, I have not heard of any other incidents like the military service or the Social Security Corporation mm -hmm. or things of that nature where I think you, you might see some conflicts, uh, and I've, I've read about some of those here in the north. It has to do with mm -hmm. uh, being able to, you know, to dig wells, and in many yeah. cases, we don't know how many of those wells have been legal, or exactly. people have been bribed to allow the wells. Mm -hmm. But then you bring the aquifer down, and then mm -hmm. nobody has water, and then mm -hmm. the next thing you have is conflict. Yeah, absolutely. And then, without a doubt, I, I have no idea how they've been affected because uh, the Mormons owned a lot of the land all the way up to the border, mm -hmm. and, and they sold it. Yeah. And they sold it. Yeah. The guy that was uh, uh, president of the local bank was from the Mormon mm -hmm. colony, and his brother was telling me that they, they just had to get rid of it, and you almost have no choice. Mm -hmm. It's one of those, do we... This is how much we'll give you, which mm -hmm. is usually way above market mm -hmm. value. And yeah. Do, do we make the check out to you or your widow? Mm -hmm. You make up your mind. <laughs> and then were those communities then once selling the land, like mm. leaving to the United States or elsewhere? Well, some of this were not communities per mm -hmm. se, but rather land that was bought, mm -hmm. like for mm -hmm. ranching purposes. Oh, so okay, not, for sure. You're not, you don't, we're not talking about a, town or anything. Mm, not like, or, very much it, settled. Yeah, it's not like mm -hmm. a camp, for example. That, for sure. That, the, the Mormon colonies have their own communities, mm -hmm. but uh, that that's not the case. And, and mm -hmm. even then, the people run into problems because you may accept the money and all these good things, mm -hmm. but the cartels may decide they're not going to change the, the deed to the yeah. land. For sure. When the feds show up, yeah. guess whose name's on the deed? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that ends up being they, they a problem. They were telling me of a case of somebody who sold the land and they were very mm -hmm. happily enjoying the, their life in Acapulco. <laughs> Yo, no, and then their land was tied to all this activity. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh. those are 
just to, because uh, they were prime areas for archaeological excavation mm, where you mm -hmm. could find pots and all kinds of have all the Pueblo type. Oh, for sure. And uh -huh. then well, you don't want to be around there digging for anything. Right. Because no one's going to think. <laughs> Right. Yeah, <laughs> That's no. the original intent. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> so that, that, so I'm, I'm just wondering, I wonder how that's going to affect them. And the other would have to be uh, the unfortunate, uh, because there's a overall, how are you handling modernity mm -hmm. given your, your views, your positions, yeah. your values, etc. But yeah. also then, in that case, when you intermingle that with economics and, and seeing how many people have ended up going the, uh, down the road to perdition with drug trafficking or Absolutely. even growing and so on. Yeah. Which would mm -hmm. be a lot. I mean, so all you can do is measure the number of people that say have been arrested. Yeah. And then, you know, the, mm -hmm. I don't know there's any mm -hmm. other data that would be. Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult to, to gather. I mean, we're speaking openly about this because we're here in, in the U.S. Um, but yeah, just impossible to, to gather any type of data. Yeah. And it's so important, but just impossible to access. You know, it would be very threatening even if you go to the authorities and so on. Well, the authorities are pretty much often, mm -hmm. you know, on, in the payroll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and they're just going to assume automatically DEA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One way or the, or the other. But I, I thought that yeah. that data would be give us a sense of how the colonies are thriving. And, and the other one that it's mm -hmm. hard, it would be census data. Uh, For sure. In terms of how many people. Yeah. Here, just because of, it's easier to track by surname. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know that immigration... They should have data that, that identifies new arrivals to the country, let's say from Canada or mm -hmm. from anywhere else. Yeah. But again, if those people were here before. <laughs> exactly. And they're Mexican nationals and mm -hmm. so on. But I don't know how many, for example, have like dual citizenship with yeah. Canada. Like some people do Absolutely. that. Yeah. And then that, you know, people also hedge mm -hmm. the bets in terms of where I need to move. Yeah, exactly. But they, they gave me a lot of examples of people who have gone back and forth, mm -hmm. depending on how well their agricultural efforts yeah, went absolutely. to Canada and here. Yeah. But the pool absolutely. of the family, for example, is huge. Yeah. For some. Because now if my son and his wife and my grandkids are moving over, that's mm -hmm. where I want to be. Yeah, exactly. Which is very typical of the say of a, Mexican migration mm. to the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. That, well, now my son and daughter are here and I have grandkids here. I have no, yes, I'm going to retire, but I'm not going back home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, that, that's, uh, you need a really specialist in a variety of fields. So that's where you put, you put teams together. Oh, yeah. And come up with one heck of a profile for the, yeah, yeah for the Mennonite community. Yeah. I thought that would, that would be fascinating to, to have, and not just for them, really for other yeah, groups, because most of the work has been done. I, even the Ina uh, has not. Most of the work that they've done does not include the Mennonites. It includes the Mennonites. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't include the Mormons either. Yeah. And this is the national mm -hmm. school that's distributing. Materials. Mm -hmm. And so that's the federal education agency. It's the, uh, they have like a National Instituto Nacional de Antropología e Historia. Oh, they have okay. museums. They have oh, a museum complex, like uh -huh. the one across the border. For sure. It's uh -huh. one of them, but they also uh -huh. do research. But then their Mexico City office, and I don't know, I'm assuming they have regional offices, they have commissioned all types of work. For example, oh, I see. Uh -huh. recording the music of the Sierra oh, Maya, for sure. know, from every part of Mexico and making yeah. it available. Yeah, absolutely. The ironic thing is that the stuff for Chihuahua, mm -hmm. you couldn't find it in Chihuahua mm -hmm. because people bought it up. Yeah. I bought it in Veracruz where nobody cared about Chihuahua. Oh, they yeah. They were glad to sell me everything I could yeah, do. I wanted yeah, from yeah, Chihuahua. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I could yeah. have bought the stuff for Veracruz because it was sold, so sold, so by a fluke. Yeah. I said, hmm, 
I've been looking in the wrong place. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but so, uh, somewhere I, I have uh, the the various uh, books and products uh, for each uh, state. Yeah. In Mexico, the, yeah. uh, their own Bureau of Census in Eji. Mm -hmm. does very good work because they also do all the, a lot of the mapping. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you when we finish mm -hmm. the map that we have. Oh, yeah. And if you want to, if I can just give you, do you have a memory stick with you? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. you want to, I can give you all the slides I have. Oh, wonderful. And you can just... Yeah, wonderful. And, and they're actually, the way they're organized is that uh, a little bit of the history of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Catherine the Great, etc. Mm -hmm. So people know where I'm coming from here. Yeah. The values of uh, yeah. Anabaptist values and then uh -huh. the two colonies. Yeah. And then the, at the very bottom, the, the challenge to modernity. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is the videotape I gave you is part of that. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, because there you're going to get some very, mm -hmm. well, obviously everything's done in color and yeah, yeah. what have you. Yeah. And, 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 some some interesting yeah. views. Yeah. Um, so before we close out today, any other um, comments that you'd like to make about um, the cross cultural interactions or um, hopes for cross cultural interactions there in the colonies? My own views. I would hope that the desire to maintain their identity separate so on is respected by mm, the government mm -hmm. yeah that that's inherent right and yet by the yeah. same token members of the group that want to change yeah. that and mm -hmm. they're doing it which is yeah. they, and they've done it before and so i think that'll continue to yeah to happen that you mm -hmm. want to be able to to periodically measure i just haven't had the time to go and do updates and really oh, measure. For sure. but again the violence made it very very difficult but i think yeah. uh I didn't know, for example, I said maybe the Central Mennonite Committee would be interested in, mm, mm -hmm. in doing that type of uh, research and so they could act properly catalog for sure who's who. Yeah, absolutely. Because I lost track and I don't know how many communities may have, let's say, a mixture of uh, old Colonier and Sommerfelders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, and that really takes someone very much from within the group, I think. Yeah. To, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> carry out. It's hard to do by outsiders. Yeah. I mean, if you spent all your life there and so on, yeah, you would. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised that in many of these communities, there are, go there are going to be some Mexican nationals that by virtue of the jobs they have or their own personal interests, uh, have a lot of expertise. Oh, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Especially in how they, uh, the, the the Mennonite uh, colonies interface with the government mm, mm -hmm. and, and different organizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm hoping I've got some contacts, but yeah, just really kind of tap into, like, mm. you know, from, from those perspectives, like, of all those years of, of interactions, um, mm. the Mexican national perspective, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of largely missing from mm. the literature. Yeah, no, no, yeah. It is. like I said, I thought, there's a guy who was helping the people here in Capulín, uh, who was from the Agricultural Bank, and mm -hmm. he was very knowledgeable of the mm -hmm. things they could and could not do, and he would advise mm -hmm. them and so on. Yeah. I, I don't, we never went into whether they were tapping credits or anything right. like that, because mm -hmm. uh, I felt that was, and I'm sure they would have felt it was confidential, but yeah. uh, he, I, once I, I gave him a ride uh, to both them, all the way to Cuauhtémoc, we went mm -hmm. from, and, and he was still going to, he's, yeah, they say, I went on to Chihuahua to see some relatives, mm -hmm. but the community leader w had gone, was going to take a, a niece to see a, a Mennonite uh, folk healer. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he himself needed to see someone to help, uh, just having back problems and what have you. And, yeah. and he said, well, it's the, the same person can help mm -hmm. her. Yeah. So, I mean, just looking at the alternative health system Absolutely. that has to exist there, right, which I never went into in great mm -hmm. detail. Because I was sampling, I'm asking, what language do you obtain medical services? Yeah. 
Mm. See, when you get here to El Paso, you may we have a situation right here. The doctor was right here on Mesa Street, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there. It's an ENT doctor. Yeah. And a Mennonite couple walks in. Yeah. And the doctor is an English-speaking doctor, yeah. monolingual. Yeah. Okay. And the the patient is the Mennonite wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who the she must explain whatever she has to mm -hmm. her husband. Yeah. And now her husband's going to translate that into Spanish yeah. to the nurse. Who will then translate it in English? And I said, well, that's a hell of a lot of translation. Yeah, you know? I mean, exactly. I, I, I don't yeah. want to, oh. there's a lot that can be lost there. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but you, you mm -hmm. can see the, he already mm -hmm. had it figured out that this is how they could communicate. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was talking to them when they were mm -hmm. sitting there. They're, they're very mm -hmm. surprised that I knew the area. Yeah. <laughs> where yeah, they were yeah. from and some of the people, yeah. you know, but, yeah. uh, in other cases, they they may be very reticent to engage yeah. uh, strangers. Yeah. So hopefully that we'll see more of that, like the health system, the different mm -hmm. spheres. That because mm -hmm. now you need health specialists. I have mm -hmm. no idea. Clinics like Seguro Social and so on, mm -hmm. as opposed to the the private sector. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, like you were saying, just the the intersection, like within the alternative medicine sphere between Mexican yeah. nationals and Mennonites, and just how much overlap that that there is, and just all the the wealth of information to be found there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would be interesting. I mean, other mm -hmm. people tell me he was more interested in looking at the crafts, the the furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably know that. Uh, a lot of your furniture dealers from Tucson have bought out a lot of the old Russian hope chests and things mm, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this, some of the, some of these groups still manufacture their own. Yeah, absolutely. Their own, uh, furniture. Yeah. In, in those styles. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm surprised that Oprah hasn't shown up to buy. Nah. <laughs> if she buys shaker furniture. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and she's willing to pay, what, $240,000 for a stool or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that oh. the, the hope chest and everything mm -hmm. it's a soul yeah and i said yeah i'm surprised no one actually thought of mm -hmm. turning that into a business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of one of the interesting turns i think that i've seen and heard from people there is sort of like now you have this conflict that kind of comes from the commercialization like of of Mennonites, of Mennonite products, you know, uh, promoting tourism and economic activities on that and sort of the conflicts that arise from whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, then my uncle Joel, one time I was at his house and he, and he was telling me, he says, taste this. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, they, they sold me this at the market sales Mennonite cheese. Mm -hmm. He says, it's not. The taste is in there. It doesn't have the fat. Mm, mm -hmm. He was very knowledgeable. Of that. I probably wouldn't know the difference. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, yeah. I was able to uh, guess that mm, now somebody's actually doing their own cheese mm -hmm. and, and trying to label it as men and Yeah, night to, exactly. To get <laughs> exactly. More out of it. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. paying for the homemade uh, mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And that, like I say, I haven't, but you, a lot of the supermarkets in Juarez, but even on this side now, are selling mm -hmm. the, the cheese. Yeah. I, I don't know what, what else, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. There's a restaurant there in Manitoba. If you're driving south, it would be on the right hand mm -hmm. side, but they took me to eat there one time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the young man, Hildebrandt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who, he was my guide mm -hmm. to the community. In yeah. other words, they would open the doors if he was right. With me, exactly, you know? exactly. Yet the that restaurant and I think there are other restaurants that have been used for uh, for tourists who do like one day excursions or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If you, there, there is, if you're aware, there's this cruise that you take from LA by ship mm -hmm. all the way down to La Paz. Okay. And then from La Paz. You go over to 
if for some reason the the cruise doesn't go into Mazatlan, which would mm -hmm. be easier, but they're actually ferried yeah. over. Mm -hmm. And then from Mazatlan, people are bused down to Los Mochis, then they get on the, on the train, they go oh, to Chihuahua. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. Then depending on the package that you buy, you can uh -huh. spend one or two days in Chihuahua, or you can choose to do those excursions into Mennonite uh, uh -huh. country. I think they were trying to include Parral because of the museum, they opened up to Pancho Villa and yeah, all that sure. stuff. Uh -huh. Uh, but, uh, then all of a sudden that's a source of, uh, you're actually going to visit the Mennonite farm. You're going to have mm -hmm. a meal mm -hmm. at a Mennonite restaurant. Yeah, exactly. And, and I don't know if they had, what else they could have had. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm trying to remember if you could actually, I know that I brought cheese a lot of times and things like that. But For sure. I, I don't know. At one time or another, agriculture here may decide you can't cross this product. Like, you, you can't cross the eggs. Mm -hmm. when, I, when we went with the anthropologists that time, we also went to the Mormon colonies. Mm -hmm. And the guy there called the the cold storage packing in the Casa de Grandes, and they gave us a box of apples. Yeah. So I told guys, you know, it's only about an hour and a half ride. You marry the apples like mad because you cannot, everything else is going to happen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. He turned over. Exactly. Yeah. So we came over and we get, and a lot of these people are actually State Department people. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, we even stopped at a place, uh, over there in, uh, where they have a lot of the, uh, pottery like that one. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, this guy's bought about every, they, they bought out the whole stand oh, that was on the road, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. emptied it. <laughs> yeah. So we come down here to the bridge and because I'm in charge of the group, so I move up in front. The guy opens mm -hmm. up the door and buses are inspected separately. Yeah. Well, the immigration officer is like, uh, who said I wanted you to get down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I figure, okay, he's going to go one by one or whatever because mm -hmm. sometimes everybody has to get off. Yeah, for sure. You all your stuff, and mm -hmm. they'll screen you so with, you know, this time, so where are you guys from, and mm -hmm. what, where you're from, you two. Okay, well, fine. So, <laughs> so all of a sudden, this guy's had, yeah. after I had told him that it was illegal to bring in apples, well, all yeah. of a sudden, those apples acquired tremendous value yeah. because they were smuggled apples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were <laughs> all the agricultural products over the. Yeah, they, they were like uh, they were going to take those homes back. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> wherever they came from. Yeah. In it, but I said, well, I, it, it would be interesting. Mm -hmm. I just have no idea what role they play, even in, in the state but national economy. Because mm -hmm. if you ask both Mennonites mm -hmm. and Mormons about mm -hmm. the apple product, for example, for sure. They know that there's some things they cannot, again, bring, bring over, but mm -hmm. they, va to them, the value of an apple is how much you can sell a single apple for mm -hmm. downtown Mexico City. Oh, okay, yeah. Or you're yeah, selling yeah, yeah. it. That's about as retail as you're going to get. Absolutely. It's not the supermarket where you're going to buy 10. This is where you, One. you're passing by and you want to get an apple. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how much of that goes in that? direction i have no idea yeah and i don't know if there are still any commer any commercial ties between the the mormons and the mennonites they mm -hmm. have a, mormons have a a turkey i mm -hmm. uh, can't remember the name of the guys and that's obviously for sale in the, by and large in the u.s but yeah. it's interesting yeah. that in many cases there are many products we said, no, we're going to get more money out of this in Mexico City. I'm not yeah. selling a blessed thing to the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> this is where yeah. the money's at, even bad times. Yeah. And I don't know how much the cachet happens to be of, uh, for example, being able to claim that this is an apple that was produced. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like commodity and identity yeah, connection. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, see, all those things require, you pick up bits and pieces, but somebody mm -hmm. really who knows the industry well Absolutely. would be able to do that. Because I, yeah. I think that their economic impact, which is why they were brought in, is uh, very strong. Yeah, for sure. The banking industry recognizes it and yeah. caters to them. Yeah. And, and that automatically gives them a great deal of access to power. Yeah, absolutely. Power. Yeah. 
So like I said, in downtown, you can see the Red Cup fact, uh, pharmacy and mm -hmm. other stores. Yeah. And somebody was telling me that a lot of that main drag was owned by them. I have again, have no idea. Yeah. I, I was, since I was not doing that type of research. Yeah, exactly. And, and somewhere in my mom's house, she passed away about five, six years ago, that stayed a little, I bought in quote, Temuk, the Tayomara, or Ramuri Inn, I think it's called, the mm -hmm. hotel. Next door, there was a curio shop. Mm -hmm. And they have different things from the Sierra Tayomara, but they had, mm -hmm. Uh, these two, uh, it's like a Mennonite couple sitting on a porch. Mm, for sure. Yeah. That they claim they was made by, by Mennonites. Mm -hmm. For yeah. sale to them. Yeah, for sure. Made out of, um, well, bread, but the, if you think, if you take the crust off, mm -hmm. then you can shape that and then paint it. And, oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's interesting. And I said, and that's one. Of the, I still want to get that out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I thought that would be in the, that would be. I, I don't know how many people are doing that type of thing. For sure, yeah. Because I know that some of the Mormon uh, families who were perhaps not as well off or what have you mm -hmm. were baking uh, pies mm. for the restaurants and what have you. Yeah. And I said, well, gosh, the Mennonites have restaurants and so on. Mm -hmm, it seems to mm -hmm. me that certainly anybody who's growing apples, that's going to be one of the things they can do, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So that, no, those are just the areas that I think would be mm -hmm. great to see someone else do the research. Huh? The research. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having um, this conversation today. Yeah, you're welcome.